Hi, my name's Alistair Chapman and I'm a professional TV cameraman and in this video I'm going to take a look at this little beauty here which is Sony's AX100 4K and HD camcorder. Now as well as this review video I'm also going to be producing a couple of tutorial videos with some shooting tips for this camera so please take a look out for those as well. So what's this little camera all about? Well, it's a 4K compact camcorder producing a very high quality image. I really am impressed by the quality of the images. Um, recording using Sony's new XAVC-S codec as well as AVC-HD and as in addition MPEG-4. So lots of nice features. So let's run through the features of the camera. Well, on the front here, we have a 12 times optical zoom lens. So optical zoom no loss of image quality throughout that zoom range and 12 times uh, gives you the equivalent to around about a 29 to about a 348 millimeter when you're talking in DSLR terms zoom range and that really is a remarkably large zoom range range for a small compact 4k camera as well as the 12 times optical zoom you can also activate Sony's clear zoom function and this is activated by going into the camera menu and activating the steady shot function here and turning it on to active and now you'll get the clear image zoom function which extends the zoom range to 18 times in 4k and 24 times in HD and it really is very high quality it's very difficult to see in the shots when the electronic part of the zoom function is taking place compared to the optical and it's perfectly usable for most shooting situations. A really interesting feature on this camera that I haven't really seen before on a camera of this size is the fact that behind the lens or as part of the lens assembly it has built-in ND filters. Now normally you only find these on high-end professional cameras as a built-in option so it's really nice to see this on a small camera like this. Now, what, what is an ND filter? What does it do? Think of it as sunglasses for the camera. So when the light levels are too high, normally you have to close the aperture, the iris of the camera to make it smaller to compensate. Now, if you make the aperture too small on a camera, the picture can actually start to become soft. It's uh, an effect called diffraction limiting, um, but a small aperture can lead to a soft picture. So by having an ND filter like sunglasses built into the camera, instead of having to make the aperture very small, we can introduce these ND filters to make the picture darker without closing the aperture too much. And it's a really good feature. It either operates automatically or manually. When you are in the auto mode, you have the switch in auto. If you're driving the camera manually, we switch this switch to manual here and then you can select exactly how much ND you have and you have a clear position one, uh, two and three uh, levels of ND each one getting successively darker and that really allows you to get your aperture at that optimum range which really for most situations you want to be around about f5.6 f8 so this is a very nice feature to find on a little camera like this not seen it before on a small camera um, Sony CX900 I believe also has it and it's a really valuable thing to have. Now behind that zoom lens we have a one inch sensor so this is actually quite a large sensor for a small camcorder. Typically little cameras like this tend to have one third inch sensors these are very very small. Having this larger one inch sensor means that in low light this camera actually performs really well even though it's a 4k camera. So we have very good low light performance from this camera. The one inch sensor has 20 megapixels, but for video we only use uh, just a little over 14 megapixels. Um, for still photographs, the camera can take stills as well. That whole sensor is used for still images. The image quality really is very good. The pictures are very sharp, very clear. The colors are very nice and very rich. Dynamic range is quite reasonable for a camera of this size. So we have a nice sensor producing a nice picture. How do we record it? Well, with this camera, you're really spoilt for choice. Something you do need to consider is there are different models of this camera depending on which part of the world you live in. So some of the frame rates that you can shoot at will be different 
depending on the region you're in. In 4K, the camera can record at up to 30 or 25 frames per second. It also does 24 frames per second and it uses Sony's XAVCS codec. This is a new codec, very nice codec, and it runs at about 60 megabits per second in 4K. If you want to use the camera in 4K, your recording media has to be SDXC media. But don't worry about that. SDXC is low cost, easily accessible uh, and cheap media, but you must use SDXC. You can't use SDHC for 4K. If you want to shoot in HD with this camera, again, we can use Sony's XAVCS codec and in HD, it goes to 50 megabits per second, as well as very, very high quality XAVCS. We can also shoot in HD using the AVCHD codec, very common codec. It's the codec that you normally find in a camera of this size, really easy to deal with, to work with, to edit. Um, and in AVCHD, you can shoot at up to 50 or 60 frames per second with this camera. So lots of nice options here from 24 all the way up to 50 or 60 frames per second, uh, depending on the camera model that you have. Now, as well as XAVCS and AVCHD, you can also shoot MPEG-4 on the camera. And that's 1280 by 720, so it's not full HD, but it's only at three megabits per second. These are very, very small files. Now, why does this camera have that? Well, it's ideal for uploading directly to YouTube. And one of the nice things about this is we can shoot at MPEG-4, 1280, 3 megabits per second while we're shooting in 4K. So as well as having your 4K master, you also have this MPEG-4 file that you can upload to YouTube immediately to share with your friends or your colleagues, or maybe even you're doing some TV news work or something like that, uh, breaking news story, and you need a small file that you can upload immediately and that 1280 by 720 MPEG-4 file, because it's only three megabits per second, will upload nice and quickly. Other nice features of this camera. Well, it's common to have a flip out LCD on a camera like this, that's normal these days. But also on this camera, on the back here, we have a small OLED viewfinder. Now this viewfinder is remarkably good. It is small, but because it's OLED, it's very, very high contrast. It's nice and sharp and it's actually really easy to work with, especially in very bright sunshine. On a bright sunny day, an LCD screen like this can be quite tricky to see. The OLED on the back here, because it has a little eyepiece and an eye cup, eye cup is actually very easy to use on a nice bright sunny day. And actually uh, one of the other things, if you hold this up to your eye, so you have your eye right up against this, it actually acts as another point of contact with your body and that helps you hold the camera uh, more stably or uh, steadier. So it really helps with using the long lens shots when you're zoomed right in on something, it may help you get a slightly steadier shot. So it's a really nice feature to find on a small camera like this. The LCD screen here, the main screen, this is a touch panel and many of the camera's controls and functions are done from this screen. So if I want to uh, change my focus, for example, I can touch on here, we can go into the menu and we can choose uh, spot focus. So you can actually touch the screen and focus and the camera will focus at the point that you touch on the screen. Uh, also similar feature for exposure and that's a very nice tool. If you don't want to use the touch screen to control the camera, well it also has a full range of manual control. So for the lens here, we have a nice big ring on the front of the lens, and this ring can be used either to control zoom or focus. Normally I have it set to focus control because there's also a zoom rocker on the top of the camera. So nice manual focus control here if you want that. Uh, just press the button here to switch between manual and auto. Also on the side of the camera down here, we have four buttons and a control wheel. This button here switches the camera between manual and auto. And then we have separate function controls here for iris, for the aperture, for the gain or ISO of the camera, and for shutter speed. And by pressing this button here, the wheel becomes active here and controls that particular value setting. So we have full manual control of this camera, 
or if you don't want manual you can drive it fully automatically and in fact in the full auto mode it does a really good job the exposure is pretty accurate most of the times the autofocus doesn't hunt so it's a nice easy camera to shoot with uh, one thing that I do tend to do with this camera though I find it the auto exposure is a little on the high side but one of the nice things that you can do is you can put an offset to the auto exposure in the camera in the menu uh, to compensate for that and I normally run a 0.7 minus 0.7 EV offset to my auto exposure and I, that gives me a result that I'm happier with and please see the tutorial videos for uh, instructions on how you do that. On the top of the camera up here, tilt it up here, we have Sony's MI shoe and this is a multi uh, user interface you can put all kinds of accessories uh, on this shoe um, for this camera and actually one of the really nice things about this camera it's really well made these flaps and covers um, there's also covers uh, on the back here for the power and charging connector um, and also on the side here we have a mini uh, HDMI, micro HDMI and a headphone socket these covers and ports are actually really well made. This is a very solid camera. It's made out of what feels like uh, some sort of aluminium alloy and it feels really solid. It feels really substantial in your hands and that's really nice. It it's just feels like it's going to last. It feels very well made. The battery that comes with the camera, well that gives you around about uh, three hours of runtime. That's been my experience with this battery. So really good battery life from the camera uh, and it's it's just a nice camera to use. So in conclusion, what do I think of this camera? Well, it's highly recommended by me. It produces really, really good image quality. The only small negative thing that I will say about the image quality of this camera is that the sensor that's in the camera is probably one that was originally developed for still photography and as a result it does suffer from a little bit of image skew that's when objects pass through the frame quickly and they appear to lean over or bend a little bit and the skew on this camera is more than you get with let's say an HD camera I, I think that is just a limitation of having a 4k sensor in a camera of this size but other than that image skew issue the images are really nice they're very sharp very clear the lens is really good 12 times zoom going up to 18 or 24 times optically stabilized uh, so it's a really versatile camera there are other cameras on the market right now that are sort of DSLR form factor um, I actually find for shooting video I prefer this shape I like to be able to hold the camera you know, in my hand uh, hold it up to my eye and shoot it as a video camera so from a, a ergonomic point of view I feel this is perhaps better than some of the DSLR options that are currently on the market it really is a video camera and it is very small and compact as I say pictures are great 4k recording uh, 4k output to plug it into your 4k TV the HD recordings as well are superb 50 megabit per second XAVCS in HD produces one of the best HD pictures I've seen from a camera this small so really I do recommend this camera I think it's good value for money it's compact it's really really exceptionally well built you have to pick one up and hold it and feel it to see what that what I mean when I say about that but for me highly recommended if you want a small compact 4k camcorder you seriously need to consider this one on that road right now. Huge hail, uh, huge hail landing.